Hi everyone. In today's video, we're going to talk briefly about what are descriptive statistics, uh, and then we're going to go through how to calculate one kind of descriptive statistic called a standard deviation. All right. Now, descriptive statistics, just like the name sounds, are meant to describe data sets. And there's two major categories of descriptive statistics, those that describe where the center of the data set is and those that describe where the spread of the data set is, how spread out the data is. Now, for describing where the center of the data set is, we have mean or X bar for short, median and mode. Now, I'm guessing that hopefully most of your AP Bio students coming into your class have had to calculate a mean or average before. You just sum up all the points and divide it by N, where N is the number of data points in the set. Median is the halfway point, And mode is the most frequent or common point. And all three of these describe the center of the data set in slightly different ways. Now, to describe the spread, how spread out a data set is, you have range, which is the highest uh, value da data point uh, minus the lowest value data point, standard deviation, which we're going to talk about in this video, and standard error of the mean, which I'll talk about in my next video. So let's get started with these two sample data sets. Data set A has five members. Data set B has five members. So that means that N for both data sets is five, okay? In data set A, all five members of the data set are the number three. Data set B, we have the numbers one, two, three, four, five. So let's go through and figure out the mean, median, and mode for each one. So for data set A, we'll just make ourselves a little table here. The mean's gonna be three, because if you add up all the members of the data set, three plus three plus three plus three plus three, blah, 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 is 15 divided by five. So the mean is three, okay? For data set B, let's figure out the mean. One plus two is three, plus three is six, plus four is 10, plus five is 15. I did that on purpose divided by five, so the mean of data set B is three as well. And when I teach this to my students, um, I use these numbers because I wanna make the calculation as unthreatening as I possibly can, because I don't know about your students, but with my students, sometimes I get kids in my AP Bio class who wanna take another science class, but they're kind of afraid of math, they're not that confident in their math skills, so they don't wanna take physics, so they take my class. And really, the math they need to do the statistics required of them in AP Bio is really nothing above algebra. And by the way, as you can see on the College Board's formula sheet, kids will never be required to calculate standard deviation on the exam. They, let me repeat that. Kids will not be required to calculate standard deviation on the AP Bio exam. However, they need to understand what it means and how to apply it. And I think the best way for them to understand how something works is to actually, you know, slog through the calculation a couple of times. So the mean for both data set A and data set B is three. Let's figure out the median for both data sets. Now the median is the halfway point. So the way you figure out median, you just cross out the highest and lowest in pairs. So the median for data set A would be three. And the median for data set B, I'd cross out the one and five, then I'd cross out the two and four, and it would also be three. So if we relied solely on the mean and median to describe these two data sets, it would look like the mean and it would tell you the mean and medians are exactly the same, but that wouldn't give you a full picture about these two data sets. So let's figure out the mode, which is the most common data point in data set A. Again, it's three. In data set B, there really is no mode because they're all equally common. Does that make sense? Okay, so those are the measures of the center of the data set. Now, let's move on and let's look at the spread. Now, the spread, one measure of the spread is range, which is just the highest minus the lowest data point. So in data set A, the spread is zero. In data set B, the spread is five minus one, which is four. Uh, so the range is four in data set B, and that gives us a little bit better picture that, oh, maybe these two data sets are different. 
Now, let's figure out the standard deviation. Now, kids do not need to memorize this equation. This equation is on the formula sheet that they will have access to during the AP Bio exam. And to calculate standard deviation, uh, students might be a little intimidated by some of the symbols here. So let's look at this one, sigma, which means summa or summation. All that means is you're gonna add a bunch of stuff together. Now, what are you gonna add together? This formula says for each data point in the data set, that's what X sub I means, you're gonna subtract the mean from it, and then you're gonna square it. So basically what we're finding out is how far is each data point from the mean, and then we square it. Why do we square it? Because we don't care whether it's a positive or negative number, whether the distance, uh, the difference between the data point and the mean is higher than the mean or lower than the mean. Uh, we just wanna know how big it is. And by squaring it, you get rid of those negative signs. You do that for each of your data points, add them up, and then divide it by N minus one. What's N minus one? N minus one is uh, also known as degrees of freedom. It's the number of data points you have minus one. So let's do the standard deviation for data set A first, because that's easier. So it's gonna be the square root of each data point minus the mean squared, but each data point is the same as the mean, right? So for each one, that difference, x sub i minus the mean is gonna be zero. Zero squared, of course, is zero. You're gonna add them all up, you're gonna get zero. And the denominator here, n minus one, n is five, so that's gonna be four. So the standard deviation here is gonna be the square root of zero over four, or the square root of zero, which is zero. All right, so that's the standard deviation for data set A. Now let's figure out the standard deviation for data set B. Standard deviation for data set B is gonna be a little bit more complicated. So let me make my big square root sign here because we're gonna have five different data points. So it's gonna be the summation of our first data point, which is one minus the mean, which is three. We'll square that. We're gonna add to that our second data point two minus the mean, which is three, and we're gonna square that. We're gonna to add to that our third data point, which is three minus the mean, which is also three, and square it. Plus four minus three squared, plus five minus three squared. All of that's gonna go over n minus one, which is four, and you're gonna take a square root of that whole thing. So let me just slide this up a little so you can see the next step in the calculation, okay? So the standard deviation for B is gonna be the square root of, let's figure this out. One minus three is minus two, minus two squared is four, plus two minus three is minus one, minus one squared is one, plus three minus three is zero squared, that's zero, plus four minus three is one, one squared of course is one, and then five minus three is two, two squared is four, and that's all gonna go over that. So just doing our next step, we're gonna have four plus one plus zero plus one plus four is 10 over four, and you're gonna take the square root of that. Now at this point, I need to break out my calculator, I don't know about you. 10 divided by four is 2.5, so it's gonna be the square root of 2.5. Using my trusty calculator again, I get 1.58. So our standard deviation for data set B is 1.58. Our standard deviation for data set A is zero. And what does standard deviation tell you? Tell, uh, what does it tell you? It tells you how spread out the data is. And the bigger the standard deviation, the more spread out the data is. And the standard deviation for data set A is zero. And that makes sense because that data set's not spread out at all, is it? Uh, the data set uh, for data set B, the standard deviation is 1.58. And that data set is considerably more spread out than the data in data set A, even though they have the same mean and the same medium. All right. Uh, hope that makes sense, and I will see you next time. Have a